Oh, oh, this is tough going. Uh, Delphi, are you sure you can manage in your condition? <laughs> I could ask you the same question. Try to keep up. Oh, as if this journey wasn't tough enough already without a roadblock. Don't worry. We should all be fine with the traveler here. We don't need to take a detour. Uh, wait, w w why are you all looking at me? You're not seriously expecting me to fight, are you? We're just curious, that's all. I don't think anyone's ever seen Farina in a fight before. Yeah, but don't you remember why? The Hydro Archon willingly gave up all her power so it could be converted into Indemnidium. Miss Farina said so herself. Precisely! <laughs> and I'm not even the Hydro Archon anymore, so all my power is gone anyway. Um, as much as it pains me, unfortunately, I should just stay put. I'm more like a uh, damsel in distress more than anything. That sounded so smug. Ugh, secondhand embarrassment is unbearable. C'est la vie, indeed. Alas. I am forced to watch on helplessly as a more brave and seasoned adventurer than I swoops in to save the day. Aww, too bad. I was so pumped to feast my eyes on fight mode for Rena. Sorry to leave all the heavy lifting to you. No worry, piece of cake. Now you shall perish! Bravo! Good show! You certainly live up to your reputation. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Anyway, the path is cleared now, so onwards and upwards. Vilma, are you there? Huh? Oh, it's you guys. Wait, what's Lady Farina doing here? I can explain. We've been rounding up the whole troop. We now have everyone except you. So, you think knowing the truth about the director's disappearance will help you write an ending to the script that pleases everyone? <sighs> I care just as much as everyone else about making the Little Oceanid a success. That's why I wanted to wait until after the show. If I open this can of worms now, I, I just don't want to make things difficult between us. We're supposed to be a unit when we're on stage. The Amal, avoiding the truth will not help anyone. Unless you mean to suggest that O'Reilly's death had something to do with you. I don't want to talk about it. Listen, Vimal. I used to think that my love for Aureli was a point of shame. I never brought it up to anyone. But now, I've made up my mind to put it all on the table. I'm prepared to face everything, to sacrifice everything, for the sake of the show. The little Oceanid cannot be complete unless we do justice to Aureli on an emotional level. <sighs> this is why people think of you as not being the smart one. <laughs> as you all know already, the troupe was kept afloat not from ticket sales, but donations from the audience. Of course, that was nowhere near enough. We took on side jobs when we weren't performing, but even then, the troupe's financial situation was pretty dire. So, anyway, one day after a show, a merchant came to me and offered us a huge sponsorship. In return, we just had to provide the audience with their drinks during performances. It seemed like a win-win, so I said yes to it on the spot without consulting the director. It was only when the merchant came to deliver the goods that I realized the drink in question was synth. Isn't that the drink paddled by the culprit behind the serial disappearances case? I, I freaked out when I saw the boxes. 
And I told the director everything right away. She was completely shocked as well. But she didn't reprimand me for making the decision without consulting her. Instead, she contacted the merchant and stated that the troupe could not agree to this collaboration. The merchant was furious, berated us for going back on our word, and threatened to sue us for damages. The amount was astronomical. There was no way we'd be able to pay. And then... I was going to sort it on my own, but the director stopped me. She said that this was an issue for the whole troupe, and it wasn't my fault. But things only got worse from there. The synth merchant just wouldn't let up, and then suddenly the director told us all to leave the city one day. I knew then that things must have reached a boiling point. I admit this whole thing was my mistake. I didn't dare to tell any of you the truth back then, and after the director disappeared, I was even more afraid to say anything. Yeah, I got Aureli killed. There, I said it! Happy now? Hey, don't say that. You traitor! You knew Aureli was in danger! Why in God's name didn't you tell us? What do you mean, you were afraid? This was a life-and-death situation! We could have saved her! How could you be so stupid?! Please, try not to get too worked up. Yeah, listen to him! You need to stay calm! Stay calm? How can I stay calm? This guy got all really murdered! She was the love of my life! And he has the gall to try and high-road us, claiming that he kept his mouth shut for the sake of the show! How about taking some responsibility for what he's done? All I can say is I'm sorry. Truly. I wanted to apologize to everyone in the troupe, but... That won't bring back the director. What good is my apology now? I'm just a coward who made an awful, terrible mistake that I can never take back. Beat me up if you want. Kill me if you prefer. It's what I deserve. End my life. So I can meet the director and apologize to her in person. Get out of my sight. Go, get lost. I don't ever want to see your face again. That's enough. You've screamed and shouted at each other for long enough. Now pipe down, both of you! Can you stop conflating the show on stage with your real-life relationships in the troupe? You keep saying that you want to use this final performance to pay tribute to your director and celebrate her life. How can you do that if you're just using it as an excuse to vent your own emotions? <sighs> you're right. I'm sorry. <sighs> on stage. The lead role is the focal point of the audience's attention. And you're all used to seeing the director as the heart of the troupe. But in her own life, her greatest desire wasn't to be the center of attention. I can tell how much she loved you all, and how much she loved the troupe. What she wanted was to build a warm home for all of her brothers and sisters. To shield you all from the storms that rage in the world outside. That's how you should remember her, and that's what you should be celebrating. I understand why you're trying to make her the hero of the story, but isn't she your hero already? After everything she did for you? Yeah. So think hard about what that means, and then think again about what you hope to achieve by arguing with each other. If you really hate each other, and can't reconcile your differences, then you could just call it quits now. Why bother with the final performance if the group is already fractured? But you can't bring yourself to do that, can you? You care too much about Director O'Reilly and the home she built you all to let go. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I don't see what's so funny. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean it that way. It's just that... For a moment there, it, it felt like our director was back with us again. If she'd seen Paolo and Vilmont at each other's throats like that, she would have scolded them exactly like you did, in that same stern voice. Really? But she sounded like such a gentle person. 
Of course she was. Even her harshest lectures came from a place of kindness, and it showed. She really was a truly outstanding person. I... What you said, it really puts everything into perspective. I'm truly sorry. I really meant for this to be a genuine apology, but I ended up making it all about me and my self-pity. It's all right. Let's save all this for after the performance. So, the ending. What are we going to do about it? Clearly, everyone needs to take a step back for now and reflect on what really matters. When emotions are running high, things get lost in the fray. The end of the story needs to focus back on O'Reilly herself. She's the true star of the show. What do you mean? The Traveler is right. You once investigated that underwater synth base and recovered items belonging to the victims. If you could find anything that O'Reilly left behind, uh, perhaps we can get a better sense of what she went through in her final days. You really think that's possible? I trust that nobody would object to the ending of the story being based on O'Reilly's true feelings? No. Well, we'll leave this in your capable hands. Come, let's pay a visit to the Palais Mermonia. The rest of you, head back to the rehearsal location for now and wait for our good news. Time to go. <laughs> you want to review some recovered items connected to victims of the serial disappearances case? But, um, that case has been closed for quite a while now. Still, since you were the ones who discovered and submitted the evidence in the first place, you don't actually have to submit an application. <laughs> okay, please hold on. I'll have someone dig them out. So, this is all O'Reilly left behind. Just whatever she was carrying on her person and this tattered old notebook. Hey! It's full of script lines! And sketches too! Looks like they show where the different props should be placed on stage! Let me take a look. Maybe there's something in here from after she was kidnapped. Mm. Aha! I found something. To whoever discovers this diary, let's see, looks like she kept a detailed record of her captor's actions. She even mentions the truth behind the experiments on dissolving young women. If we'd had the chance to examine this notebook carefully back then, it would have been a conclusive piece of evidence proving Vache's guilt. Vache took so many lives. It's still so unthinkable how many victims he had. I guess O'Reilly must have written all of this down in the hope that her records would one day be of use to investigators. Uh, wait, it cuts off. Her handwriting here gets patchier and more illegible by the line. She probably didn't have much strength left. Her final words are... I'll let you read them for yourselves. She was so terrified. She may have been a mighty hero in the eyes of her troop, but at the end of the day, she was only human. I can't bear to think how painful and lonely her final days must have been. Uh, wait, 
This part on the last page sounds strangely familiar. If you become human, you can reveal your secret to no one. You will face suffering and loneliness. Is this still what you want? Isn't that the most important line in the little Oceanid? Because I am an older sister to them. Oh. So she didn't regret her decision. Even as she sat in silence, waiting for death to come. I'm sure this is what the troop would have hoped to hear as well. She had their utmost trust, admiration, and love. And she truly deserved it. <sighs> Let's go. It's time for them to learn Director O'Reilly's final thoughts. She deserves a hero's farewell. If that's the only way to convey to the audience the courage and selflessness that she showed in the face of death, then it's a meaningful way to end the story. Even in the last moments of her life, she was still leaving a trail for others to follow. She did her best to protect as many people as possible, even if it meant sacrificing herself. We know what choice our little Oceanid would have made now, I don't think any more discussion is necessary. <sighs> well, Vilmont, if we put the past aside for now, do you think you can bring yourself to go ahead with the show? I will channel all my regret and put it into my performance, to make this a show worthy of our director. I won't ask for your forgiveness, and you don't need to worry about my feelings. This final farewell show should be about Director Aureli and her alone. Then it seems like we've reached a consensus. I have a feeling that this will turn out to be the most mesmerizing performance of your lives. Really? How can you be so sure when you've never even seen them perform before? <laughs> Don't underestimate my experience. <laughs> After watching a countless number of musicals, I've learned one important thing. If you want to move the audience with your music, you must fully commit and immerse yourself in your role, pouring all your emotion into your performance. And aren't human emotions, love, hate, regret, and hope, just the most mesmerizing things in this world? I don't believe anybody could be more committed to bringing this story to life on the stage than they are now. Thank you for the vote of confidence, Miss Farina. And thank you for supporting us through all this. Then, let's not delay things any longer. We need to discuss the details of the ending and get it nailed down once and for all. Actually, before that, I'd like to make a proposal. During the curtain call, please allow me to use the director's name instead of my own. Huh? But then... After all... This role was originally meant to be played by the director. I'm just filling in for her. Besides, a role commemorating her life should be associated with her name. Well, if you're sure you're okay with that, I have no objection to it. <laughs> now we're talking like a serious acting troupe. All right, I'll leave you to fine tune your musical while I go and procure a stage. Oh, here a stage? Oh, it's okay. Our usual place doesn't need a reservation. That place? Oh, don't be silly. For an extraordinary show, we need an extraordinary stage. By which I, of course, mean the Opera Epicles. Whoa, wait, what? No, 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 no. That's never going to work. It's far too fancy for the likes of us. 
what are you afraid of? Surely you don't think that Aurelie's story is unworthy of the grandest stage in Fontaine. <laughs> no, though that's not what I meant. It is supposed to be your grand finale, right? <sighs> I have no problem with it then. How about the rest of you? I'll take your silence as a yes! <laughs> Thank you for giving us this opportunity. It really is a dream come true. Well, then don't disappoint me. If you mess this up, it'll reflect poorly on me too. <laughs> come on, we'll need to get the go-ahead from Nervilet. I know just where to find him. Time to go. Hey, look at that. Looks like I guessed right. You were just guessing? I knew you'd be here. I'm here merely for a short break. It has been a while, Miss Farina. And you too, Traveler and Paimon. What might I assist you with today? I would like to book the Opera Epicleus for an event. You see... I understand. Mm, the process for booking the Opera Epicleus is complex and can be somewhat cumbersome. But given that the request is coming from the three of you, I see no reason to make things unduly difficult. The story of the little Ocean in it is most fascinating. I'm looking forward to seeing it performed on stage. I will say, however, that I am surprised to see your passion for the performing arts rekindled after all that has happened. Huh? Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> do I look excited? Yes. And this is the first time that I've seen you like this since your departure from deityhood. At first, I just felt bad about rejecting them. So, I wanted to learn a little bit more about their situation. But one thing led to another, and... Well, here we are. <laughs> in the past, we sat in our high chairs in the court, giving our opinions on isolated cases, all while knowing very little about the human stories behind each and every one. Maybe it's because I finally become an ordinary person and gained my freedom, but I've developed a great sense of curiosity about their lives. I am truly delighted to see you find a new lease on life. Now that you've regained some confidence, have you had any thoughts regarding a return to the stage? Why would you suddenly ask a question like that? Well, if the little Ocean it turns out to be a great success, it will no doubt become a classic. Many theater companies are certain to add it to their repertoire. The experiences and decisions of the protagonist Cleo are all modeled after your own. Naturally, this makes you eminently suited to playing the leading role. It would truly be a shame if you did not take this opportunity to allow audiences to enjoy your outstanding acting talents once more. Haven't I already made myself clear? I won't act or perform in any role ever again. No exceptions. Nor do I think it is any great shame. There is no lack of fine actors or inspirational stories, either on or off the stage. This experience is a case in point. I feel like I've learned a lot, and it has already been well worth the price of admission. I must admit, though, I'm a little envious. <laughs> They're quite fortunate to be able to bid farewell to their past in such a magnificent manner. I see. Well, I'm glad to learn that you have found a role to play that you enjoy, be it on the stage or not. I sincerely hope the show will serve as the grandest of finales. I will have my staff book the date, and mail the relevant paperwork to the troop once the details are confirmed. Thanks, Nervalette. You are very welcome. Many people were once enthralled by Lady Farina's performances, myself included. I hope that one day, she'll be able to understand that our appreciation was always sincere. Good news, 
everyone. It's done. The opera Epiclaz is booked. Thanks to my eloquent and impassioned speech, Monsieur Nouvellet was moved to provide us with a fitting stage for this special performance. We've had to fight every step of the way for this opportunity, but we now have all of the ingredients necessary to stage a truly spectacular performance. A touching story, a magnificent venue, and last but not least, a passionate and dedicated cast. Now, let's work together and make this show the best it can be. <laughs> this is truly wonderful. The sooner we can finalize the ending, the more time we'll have to rehearse. Fiumali and I just went over some parts of the script and tweaked a few things. I think it's really going to resonate with the audience now. Wow, you two had a constructive conversation? That's great! Communication is vital to any good performance. <laughs> Look at us! We've come so far! I never could have pictured this scene a few days ago. It's amazing! Even though Farina's still being a bit of a drama queen about it all, she's really fired everyone up! Please feel free to give us any comments or suggestions you have. We really value your input. Hey, Loic! Get over here! Time to practice the opening number! Cursed Cleo. She stole the waters of life from us. She's a fraud, and she must pay for her crimes. This has nothing to do with her. The ignorance and hatred of our people is to blame. How can we hope to win back the water's favor if we don't change our ways? This guy could be useful. Take him hostage. If Cleo wants him back, she'll have to show herself. Leave this place, oh little Oceanid, and never, ever look back! Everyone's really throwing themselves into their roles. I haven't seen such a fine performance in a long time. <sighs> if only... What should we do? It's almost time for her to take the stage! <sighs> Why? Why does it have to be now? Hey, what's going on? You're due on stage any second now. Oh no, not again. But why? What about your new meds? Did they stop working? They've... been getting less and less effective over time. I've had to keep increasing my dose. What? I thought they'd cure it. So they were only managing your symptoms? I figured... whatever it took to get me through this final performance. How could you do this to yourself? And after that lecture you gave me about not looking after my health? I'm sorry. I've let everyone down. You... <sighs> This is a conversation for another time. How can the show go on without its star performer? Uh... Miss Farina? I'd like to make a request of you. Say no more. If you're sick, you need to rest. I know what you're going to ask. Loic, your character has no more scenes, correct? Oh, uh... Yeah, I think my scenes are all done. Although... I do have one more line, but I guess another guy in the troupe with a similar voice register could take it. Why? Please take Dolphy back to her place to rest. I'll sing the finale. <sighs> From the sublime to the ridiculous. After all that, everything's come full circle. Thank you, Miss Farina. I'm so sorry to put you in this position after everything you said. Never mind. What's done is done. It's really my own fault for getting in too deep. <laughs> no one likes regrets. Myself included. Leave it to me. 
I've watched you rehearse so many times that I've learned Cleo's part by heart. I do not doubt your acting skills, but please allow me to ask just one more question. After all, this show is dedicated to the life and legacy of our director. What, in your opinion, is the reason Cleo shines so brightly? It's her pure heart. Despite all the pain and loneliness she had to endure, she never once stopped believing in the beauty in this world. Well said. I leave Director O'Reilly in your hands. secret to no one. You will face suffering and loneliness. Is this truly what you want? Is it just me? Who was that Lady Farina on the stage just now? She hasn't been seen for a while now, and she just appears out of nowhere? Gotta say, though, her acting skills are as superb as ever. The Little Oceanid, Cleo, played by Aurélie Fumont. Wait, that's not her name. What's going on? I don't know. Maybe it's just a doppelganger. I've spent a lot of time out of the spotlight, and they didn't use my name during the curtain call either. Hopefully, not too many people recognized me. It's too bad that I had to break the one clear rule I'd managed to make for myself, even if I had no choice. Still, I have to admit that, despite everything, it felt good 
to be back on the stage again. Finally, we would like to give a special thanks to our artistic consultant and event coordinator, Miss Farina. Hey, that's not what we agreed on. Oh, so it was Farina after all. She's back. Uh, honestly, what is he doing? He should have run that by me first. All right, calm down. Don't be mad. This was a group decision. We just didn't want your contributions to go unacknowledged. After all, it's been the rule in Fontaine since ancient times that everyone's work, visible or invisible, is equally deserving of recognition. Yes, I know the rule, but... but... Uh, it should still be applied on a case-by-case -case basis! I wasn't ready for this yet. Ah, uh, it's no big deal. What's the worst that could happen? Oh, yeah? Well, since you think it's so easy, you can sign them for me. This is a great chat and all, but can we talk about that crazy thing that happened during the show? It nearly gave Paimon a heart attack. Paimon flew over to where she was supposed to be and was about to drop the prop vision, and then suddenly, a real one popped out of thin air! Oh, uh, that... <laughs> I've got no idea what happened there either. But hey, it worked pretty well, didn't it? I'll bet the audience has never seen such a realistic prop. Wait, what about Dolphy? I wonder how she's doing. Oh, uh, let's go check on her as soon as we finish clearing the stage. Yes. Plus, she'll definitely want to hear how the end of the show went. If nothing else, we can safely say that we accomplished what we set out to do. You're back. She's doing okay. Her condition stabilized after taking some of her original medication. From experience, though, I'd say she still needs a few more days of rest. How did the performance go? Was it a success? Did the audience like it? You'll be glad to know it was fantastic! Also, you're not gonna believe what happened while Farina was on the stage! You'll probably be able to read all about it in the Steambird first thing tomorrow morning! That's wonderful. I'm so sorry I failed to see it through to the end. I guess I was wrong to try and tough it out to begin with. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Like they told me after announcing my name during the curtain call, everyone's work deserves recognition. Even though you couldn't see it through to the final scene, the audience was very impressed by your performance. It's safe to say that you made your mark on this memorial show. <laughs> well, one way or another, we did it. I've had bad luck ever since I was born, so I never expect things to go smoothly in life. I'm just happy to know that we went out on a high note. That's all that matters. Blaming your bad luck again, are we? Maybe if you didn't push yourself past your limits so much, your illness wouldn't be flaring up all the time. Oh, don't you start. I don't have the energy to argue with you right now. Aw, you two clear. 
clearly care a lot about each other. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. You mean we never stop arguing with each other? So, any plans for the next step? After the brilliant performance you put on, the reputation of your troop is sure to spread through Fontaine like wildfire. You won't have to disband if you don't want to. You could capitalize on the rave reviews and license out the little Oceanet to the bigger theater troops out there. That would do wonders for your financial situation. No, we should still disband. Yeah, it's what we all agreed to. After all this happened, I should give you guys some space. But maybe our paths will cross again one day. I still want to keep performing, so I might join another troupe. After watching Miss Farina's performance, I think I'm starting to understand our director's infatuation with musicals. <laughs> you should do it. It suits you. I'd originally hoped to keep performing too, but... I don't know if my health will allow me to. Oh, so now you finally got your priorities in order. I guess I'll hold off until you've properly recovered as well. What about you, Miss Farina? Any future plans? Well, frankly, I think a return to obscurity is no longer an option for me. I'm sure a slew of consultancy requests will hound me wherever I go, until I finally acquiesce. You rather sealed my fate there with your special thanks at the end of the show. Sorry. It's quite all right. No need to apologize. What I meant to say is that this whole experience has shown me that perhaps I'm not as averse to a return to the stage as I'd previously imagined. Maybe Nervilette was right. Maybe Cleo is the right role for me. I still don't wish to pretend to be someone else, but I do have a desire to express myself. So... Maybe the show will go on for me after all. Yeah. There was once a time when I was an actress in a masquerade, seeking only to hide the truth. But from now on, I want to spend my time learning real stories about real people and how they touch the lives of others around them. I want to watch them blossom and wither, See them refined on the page, retold on the stage, and remembered long into the future. I'm sure this is what captivated director O'Reilly as well. Sounds like you're ready to stop running from your true calling. The more you get out into the world, the more you'll discover what a fascinating place it is. <laughs> then it's a deal. If a vision is a gift from the gods, then I should do my best to honor it. I'm just finishing packing up. As soon as I'm done, I've got an interview with the Steambird to get to. Thanks to all your help, the show was more perfect than we ever could have hoped for. But most of all, I want to thank you for giving me the chance to finally say farewell to Aureli. I mean, of course I have some regrets, but... There'll be plenty of opportunities in the future for us to tell the stories that we want on stage. Now that the buzz has worn off, I feel ready to pass out. Thank you so much. I feel like I've rekindled the passion I had when I first joined the troupe. It might turn out to be too little, too late for me. But still, this has been the experience of a lifetime. It's ironic to think that in my whole time as a god, 
I could only ever dream of receiving this kind of power. And now that the gods have given me their blessing, it actually feels more like I'm finally able to take my fate in my own hands. Is... is that how humans feel about it as well?